Gentlemen, welcome back to the Healing Bench. Today we have a fairly interesting, if not a little bit plain, conundrum. And that is, how do you get a decent tool without spending a lot of money? Um, so we have three interesting examples here. If you were just out in the wilderness trying to buy a wood plane, <coughs> these are all number four. I would recommend a number four for your first hand plane. It's a great size. It's very versatile, lovely size, so on and so forth. So three examples we have here. Uh, let's start from right to left. This one is a footprint. I don't know who can see that, but it's a footprint brand, which evidently is a super cheap, it's made in England, so it's old enough, probably 60s, it's got wood handles, a little bit of brass, probably 60s or 70s, I would guess, um, made in England, so it's not ultra cheap overseas, kind of, it's more expensive overseas, you know, England. Uh, it's pretty rough and ready like I don't know if you can see on this view but the mouth is actually like splayed open on this side like it's the quality control not super great this was a thrift shop find I picked up for 10 or 12 bucks just uh, just as an experiment to try her out so we're gonna go quick here lever cap old style Stanley keyhole instead of the kidney bean the um, chip breaker is super chintzy, like cheesy cheesy. The blade was okay, like it's just kind of okay. Interestingly, they have a correct angle for cutting iron. They have a bevel angle stamped into the iron, which I thought was kind of cute. Uh, adjustable frog. Um, it's got all your adjuster bits. Doesn't have the... Um, back and forth frog screw which is I kind of like but you don't need it castings are pretty good the edges aren't like super sharp and nasty or whatever and uh, it will cut a wood shaving which I guess is really the whole point isn't it so you know you can make a working plane out of that for uh, for pretty cheap because it's not a brand that people want, right? People want the Stanleys. That's it, right? Stanleys or something more bespoke than Stanleys. Next up, this made this shaving. So absolutely it is a wood plane. It will work. Do I recommend getting one? No. This is the off-brand no-name special from Princess Auto. Now we like Princess Auto here in this household and in this uh, workshop purveyors of the finest power fist um, but you know Princess Auto gear is kind of low end if they don't even put the power fister name on it so they have a number four stamped on here and then some like goofy part number stamped in back here and that's it uh, what do I say about this thing it's an experiment in patience We'll start at the front and work our way back. I, uh, I had to sand the flashing off of this front handle so it didn't feel like a little plastic knife jabbing into my hand. This screw doesn't go flush into the handle. like It sticks out an eighth of an inch all the way around so that that's your, work sur your handling surface. <laughs> Even though they went to the expense of a faux brass screw because that was traditional. You know, somebody had an older Stanley that they copied to make this one. They just did a really cheap copy job, right? Uh, moving back, the lever cap is probably some of the worst engineering I've seen. So I had to file down the outside diameter of this screw head and clean out this kidney bean hole. So that the lever cap would actually come off of the plane without taking the screw out. Um, interestingly enough, if you can tell by looking, 
they've drilled the pinhole through this lever crooked so it sits off canted on an angle so I had to actually file off some of this in here so that it could lever without binding and grinding in the the cast metal like you expect the castings to be rough quality and stuff like this is super rough casting but you you would hope that it wouldn't be you know five degrees off center on a crucial component like that so because they've they've done this so crooked the uh, the levering so this is you know see it bucks the the lever cap up there boop it actually settles down so it's tight tight it's tight here but then once you actually lever it into place it loosens so basically you have to use the screw to adjust the like you put it on and then screw it tight because it, it goes loose with the lever cap because the cantilever action is boned or the cam action is boned the blade is a surprisingly thick chunky bit of kit seems to be okay um, you know it's it's milled flat you see the big milling surface here I've put a hedge on it pretty good and you can see I have the, the cap iron back way off um, that's because this adjuster slot and this adjuster can't drive the plane iron far enough out of the body um, to work effectively if the iron, the cap iron, or chip breaker is up any closer to the edge, basically. So it runs out of adjustment. <coughs> so these these are okay. They're cheap. I had to do a bunch of work here, but you have to work on every plane. So I'll let them have a pass on that. They're cheap, effective enough. This this is okay. This is cheap, fine. It's effective enough. This I can get away with. It has the adjustable frog with the uh, in and out screw and in and out in and out screwing is the best kind and uh, the adjuster is brass they put a brass wheel on it for tradition right like again they saw one of these Stanley planes and they're like oh it's got brass on it must need brass to work doesn't but you know thanks and you can see how this this is your adjuster and it moves that lever and that drives the iron in and out of the mouth of the plane, which is another story. Um, but without it, um, the, the, the little adjuster yoke in here is so chintzy that it... Uh, and it's not long enough, or the slot is in the wrong place, or something. So that when you're trying to drive more iron out, you run out of out of yoke here like this thing just starts flying in the breeze by the time you get it kind of where you need it so the yoke is the wrong size or the slots wrong or the tip doesn't hang out enough also it's like way loose on the pin in here so that's kind of atrocious the uh, the tote plastic again feels like a very like ABS sewer pipe kind of plastic which isn't the prettiest but should be tough and it's comfortable enough like it works once I took the little knife edge flashing marks off of most of this it was comfortable enough like it's fine except for that screw the plastic handles are fine they're not as nice sure but they're fine they work uh, the mouth of this beast interestingly enough if you care to put your eyes into this little spot here, just dial your peepers in on this. You can see that the casting, it's like they, they just kind of stabbed a mouth into it and then ground out roughly where the mouth should be. But there's all this giant cast flashing and stuff here all around the edge. Like clearly they had a circular grinder because this is all hangled in that way and this one is hangled in this way. They just went with a circle and it left these trim these edges in here I had to hand file this out enough so that the iron didn't interfere with the bottom of it also the casting had quite a few little like really sharp edges and stuff which I'm pretty sure I shouldn't have to tell you it was bad um, here's an interesting bit I wanted to try the casting is also stupid thick 
Like, let's look at the, the thickness on that. She's got quite a bit of gravitas. Um, it's kind of like a more is better situation, maybe. I don't know how to do this. How do you work this thing? This small piece of plastic has defeated me. So we go like this. There we go. So we're about seven and a half mil. I would say eight mil, eight mil thick at the toe there. Let's check this one. There's your eight mil. <whistles> Swinging in the breeze. So we're about four mil there. Let's look at the Stanley. That's about four and a half or five-ish. Four and a half. So there's nothing wrong with the strength of this casting. Having this casting twice as thick doesn't really accomplish anything. Not anything helpful. So I think what happened, and I don't know if they're all like this because I've only ever seen the one of them. I think what happened is that they cast the the body too thick and then there's that uses up another eight mil or four mil or whatever of tuning distance here of of iron distance that cannot be helpful and then just uh i think that's about it on this it's too thick and all the castings are terrible but we we know that Here's, here's my sweetheart. This is my, it's not an actual sweetheart, but it's a sweetheart to me. Uh, Stanley number four. This is a type 20. I've restored it on video. I talked about it before. Probably circa 1965-ish, I think. So, wooden handles. Everything's nice. If I, the casting is decent. Like, whatever. It's just, just a good working little plane. And if you're getting a hand plane, Getting into hand planing, get yourself one of those. Or an older one. Uh, condition is more important to age, or more important than age, to somebody like me who just wants to use it and is not a collector. Um, let's have a little hoot nanny here. With all kinds of hoot, not much nanny. Let me have uh, some lumber. Let me get my lumber out. Hey, ladies. All right, so these have all been sharpened the same amount by the same guy. Oh. Why are you impossible? So you can kind of get it to work. It does some weird stuff because the iron isn't supported right at the tip. So I'm going to smooth, let me dial in, see I'm way out. Way, like I can't even see the end of the threads in here. That's kind of, you know, it's bunching up in here. So with enough fighting, uh, that's the size of plywood there, with enough fighting you can get this to pull a shaving. Yes, absolutely. So we'll try the, uh, this is another, this is the cheap, vintage cheap piece of junk one. There you go. Paper thin, it just adjusts nice on the on the wheel there, one finger. Just like you would want. It's you know it's a little bit rough and ready, but I think it's a very serviceable tool. Now this is the Cadillac of cheap number four hand planes, basically, in my opinion. Just, just tickling that in a little bit, like an eighth of a turn or so at a time. And as you can see, it's pulling these things that are like 
wisps of angel hair. Again, all sharpened the same by the same guy using the same cheap sharpening methods. So, in conclusion, uh, this this thing had so much potential, but it, you know it came so close, but not quite. Um, these are regularly around Princess Auto for about thirty bucks plus tax, which is whatever thirty five bucks or something. Paid twelve bucks plus tax at a thrift shop for this. Are you ready for the vintage Stanley Cadillac machine here? Fifteen dollars cash, no tax, at an antique shop. Uh, this took. This was a rusty thing. Uh, maybe I'll include the video of restoration on this. Took a lot of restoration work, but let me tell you, I haven't done any restoration work on this one. I just sharpened it and adjusted it. That's it. So I have like an hour into this. It's fine. I didn't flatten the sole or anything. It just works. I have several hours into this thing, trying to make it work and trying to figure out what's going on and you know get to know her a little. And uh, you know I have more time into this, which was not rusty or nasty uh, from age, than I did in into this. Um, so I, I gotta say, don't buy one of these. I love Princess Auto, um, but this is not a fine tool and not a good bargain even for what it is. It's tuned up to the point now where it will probably work some for the owner. It's on loan. Thank you for uh, letting me borrow it and try it out. Um, it's all tuned up now, so you know you can make a few shavings with it. So that's good. But this thing, I mean, this is kind of the. If you can't find one of these at an antique shop, which you, you know that's going to be a tough find. You may find something like this at a thrift store. You may even find something like this at a thrift store. There were so many quadrillion of these made, Stanley number fours and knockoffs, that I don't really see a good reason for buying one that has been built new to such a low quality standard compared to these older ones that you know they still had to be kind of good right so that's that's your lesson on hand planes i know that's long and boring but um it is what it is so get out there and make some shavings if you're looking for hand planes start with a stanley number four um Prices just go way up from there, but Stanley number four, old enough that it has wooden totes and some brass on it, or wooden handles and some brass on it, and you're probably golden. Make sure it's not super rusty. Anything else can be fixed. So, uh, you know, keep your stick on the ice. Cheers.